In my previous video where I talk about my visionary power grids, some of you has requested for me to do a breakdown of the beginner power grid. Hey guys, I'm Danny of Friendly Neighbor Calories and let's have a look at the beginner power grid in my visionary power grids pack. And the beginner power grid or node tree will be using the same fundamentals and concepts as the advanced, pro and commercial power grids. It's a simplified version if all you need is a very quick grid. As for the installation of the power grid, I already did a video on that. You can go on to my channel and have a look. In this video, we will solely focus on the beginner power grid. So I have my power grid in the gallery in my visionary power grid V6. So in version 6, the power grids are all color coded. We have the commercial, the pro, advanced and beginner. So I'm going to apply the beginner by right clicking and apply grid or you can also use your middle mouse click. So if you're not planning to buy the power grids, you can also just copy this power grid that I'm revealing for free on YouTube. All I ask is for you to subscribe to the channel and like this video. That will be tremendously appreciated as well. So once I applied the power grid, I'm going to close my gallery so that I have more real estate. Now in the color grading process, the first process that we have to do is color management. In this node tree, the color management is happening in my ODT. Or if I don't have the right color space transform because we are using a node-based color management using a CST, if I don't have the correct CST for the footage, you can also use the next node, which is a base LUT. Let's try using the ODT first, which is using a CST. So this clip was shot using an FX3 in Sony s 3 So I'm going to set my input color space to Sony s Gamma 3 Cine and input gamma to Sony s 3 And if your camera exposure and white balance is set correctly in camera, after doing your color management, this is roughly what you should see, a corrected image. What the ODT or output device transform, you can also label this as CST is doing, is transforming the footage from S Gamma 3 Cine s 3 to Rec. 9 Gamma 2.4. So you can also imagine the signal coming before this ODT node Everything is in S log tree and everything that goes after the ODT or the color management will be in Rec. 709. So the tools that you use downstream, the CST, should be meant for Rec. 709. So as I was saying, if you don't have the correct CST to go from your camera log to Rec. 709, you can also use a base LUT. Let's say for DJI D log M, there isn't really a correct CST for that. You can use a base LUT. For this, it's a Sony clip. So I have my pre-made Sony LUTs and these are LUTs that I have included some tweaks into the colors, specifically the green, to make it look nicer. So it's my Sony s 3 Visionary LUTs base. And this LUT will give you more of a natural tone. If you take a look at the greens, I'm going to grab a steel. This is my LUT and this is the CST. So if I flip it over, in the CST, the greens are slightly more saturated, but with my LUT, it's more compressed and darkened. So you get a more natural green and also a slight tweak to the blue and the highlights as well. You can also just use a CST as you would in any other grid. Going back to the first node in my node tree is where I put noise reduction. So noise reduction is done in the first node. You can look at this video if you're interested to know why. And you can make your adjustments in the motion effects palette down here using the temporal and spatial noise reduction. Since this clip is not really noisy, I'm not going to touch the noise reduction for now. So you can also turn off the note by clicking on the note number. Moving on to the next note, which is Luma and Chroma. So previously in my version 5 note trees, I usually have this all in one note, which I labeled as primaries because we will be mostly using everything in the primaries palette. So since version 6, I've separated out Luma and Chroma, but I didn't separate out the exposure, temperature, saturation, contrast, because that just makes your node tree bigger, which you have more nodes to navigate to without having any purpose to it. If the nodes are in parallel form, they are as if these two are in one node. So the effect will actually combine using these parallel nodes and output as one. So you don't really have to separate out the different adjustments. You can just compile them into Luma, which is adjustments to the exposure, the brightness, the contrast. And Chroma is for anything related to color, such as the temperature, the tint, the saturation. These are things that are related to the colors themselves. In this grid, I'm going to make a slight adjustment to the contrast going into my Luma. I'm going to lift my lift going up and dropping it back down using the gamma. So I get a smoother curve at the bottom. I'm going to drop the lift a bit more. So right now it's looking a bit dark. I'm going to use my gain and lift it up somewhere over here. 
and I can turn this node on and off to see whether it's an adjustment that I prefer or not. If it's not, then I can just right click and reset node grid. But I think it's actually improving on the grid itself. In terms of chroma, there's actually not much that I want to do because these nodes are for correction only. And for color correction, the aim is for it to look natural as if what the DP or the director saw on the day of the shoot. So again, if everything is done properly in camera, you don't have to do a lot of correction in this stage. If you're interested to know what are the processes within the node tree, you can go to the user menu within the digital asset and there's a few pages of how the workflow should be, an installation guide, and also a breakdown of the full power grids such as noise reduction, correction, secondaries, look, color management, look for XL9 and finishing effects. And everything is color coded, including the advanced, pro and commercial, and a full breakdown of everything on what to adjust within the node trees. Moving on to my secondary nodes, such as the vignette. So I can turn this vignette on, and by default, there is an inverted circular window that is helping me create this vignette right around the frame. And you can turn it on and off to see whether you prefer it for the grid or not. I think it quite helps me to focus onto the subject. So I'm going to leave it on. As for the next secondary node, which is our focus, by default, it's also using a power window, a circular power window, and raising the gamma and gain. So it's also shaped like a face. So you can very easily place this on your subject. And just like that, if you need to track, you can go into your tracker window and track it for forward and reverse. It's a very useful tool to help your audience focus in onto the subject. If I turn this on and off, you can see that her face is being brightened. But if there's no clear subject in the frame, then you can just turn this off. Moving on to the look node. This is where the color grading process starts because we have done all our color correction. So now it's to inject some creative colors. There are tons of techniques that you can use to inject a creative look into your grid. I just released a video on how to do a split saturation technique for split toning. You can have a look at that video if you are interested. But in this video, I'm going to show you a technique of how you can control the atmosphere. How I would describe atmosphere is imagine if you're in a sunset, everything around you will look super warm. Or if you're in blue hour, everything around you will look super blue. But there's a constant factor about these two situations, which is whether it's the sunset or blue hour, the black areas or the shadows will remain black because there's no light in it. Like in real life, if you look around your room in warm lighting, the darker corners are not colored. So to use the same concept and apply to your color grading to imitate a natural light kind of feeling, you can use your gain color wheel to adjust for the atmosphere. Because if you really understand how the gain wheel reacts, it pivots from pure black and the effect gradually increases towards pure white. This means that it still affects everything from the shadows to the highlights, but the effect is less in the shadow and more in the highlights. So if I want to maintain my shadows black, I can use the gain because it doesn't affect the shadows as much. And let's inject a warm color such as a sunset into this scene. I'm going to push it towards the yellow side like this then I get a very nice sunset. But of course, the sun and the lighting in this situation also plays into how you inject colors as well. If it's outdoors in a bright environment, of course, injecting warm colors will help to make a lot more sense than injecting blue color. If I move my gain towards the blue or the teal, you get a totally different look. Not to say that this doesn't look natural, her skin tones still look quite natural, just that it's a different type of look. Other than warm and cool, you can also try a little bit of green. So I'm gonna just slightly push it to green. So it's just very slight. If I turn this node on and off, without width. If you feel that you like the look, but it's slightly too heavy, you can go into your key palette into the key output gain and reduce it. Right now it's 100% at one. So I'm gonna go 0.5 for 50%, just like that. If I turn this node on and off again, I get a very nice green tone just by pushing the gain. And that's the simplest way you can inject a macro level look into your scene. Moving on, we will skip over the color management that we did just now and go into this node, which is a creative LUT for Rex 709. This node is very useful if you have a LUT 
that is meant to be used in Rec 9, which I have in my Colorist Food Creative LUTs. So there are tons of Da Vinci White Gamut LUTs in the Pro Pack and also Rec 9 LUTs in the Normal Pack. So if you want a very quick workflow and you don't want to push the look yourself, you can just use a Creative LUT here, such as the Autumn. This will give an Autumn feeling. Or Hollywood. This is a split tone, blue and warm, or something as subtle as RE. So RE is to imitate RE colors. It's somewhat similar as the S-Log 3 LUT that I shown just now. If I turn this on and off, you will notice that in the greens, it compresses it and darkens it so that it looks less digital and more of a filmic type of green. So this is very subtle. There are other looks within here as well, such as Cine Green. This gives you a more greener tone in the shadow. And if you feel that it's too heavy for your commercial work or something, you can also reduce the intensity or the opacity of the node using the key output gain. So I'm going to reduce this to 0.65. And just like that, I have a creative look without having to touch a lot of things. So it's a super fast workflow. You just need a creative LUT for that. And make sure the LUTs that you use in this node must be meant for Rec 9. So it's a fully creative LUT because there are three types of LUTs out there. Creative, technical, which transform your log footage to Rec 9. And then there's a hybrid LUT. If you were to use a hybrid LUT, you can use it in the base LUT node here. And the final node that we have in this node tree is the film grain. So the film grain and also noise reduction is only available on DaVinci Resolve Studio. If you're still using the free version, you won't be able to access this film grain or at least it will give you a watermark. And this film grain is a custom film grain that I have encoded, which gives you a very nice green right off the bat without having to make any adjustments. So it's just the right amount. It's a bit different from the presets that they have in this drop down menu here. So I have made a custom film grain that I like, even with a very small node tree such as the beginner power grade we can get a very good grade out of it. And if your footage is more or less the same across different clips, I have another clip here. You can also copy over the same node tree or the same adjustments onto the other clip. You can do that by selecting the clip that you want to apply the grade, go over to the clip you want to apply from, either right click and apply grade, or you can just middle mouse click on the grade. And just like that, the same look is being applied. But for this clip, we can go into the Luma and slightly brighten up the gamma a little bit, just like that. So I'm sure that your requirement for grading is not as extensive as a professional colorist. That's why I created this beginner power grade for you guys to use as a very fast workflow too. Just apply it, do your color management, color correction, and maybe slap on the look, then you're done. I hope you learned something new in this video. If you did, please drop a like and subscribe to watch more. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.